This tutorial is a little add-on to my previous tutorial on bar charts in Matplotlib. There are a few important details I left out of the previous video, so I thought I would make a new video just a few minutes long to cover up those missing details. So in my previous video, we talked a lot about the different customizations, the different settings, the different functions we could use on bar charts, but I left out a few important details on the different variants, the different types of bar charts. So I thought I'd just show you a bunch of codes that cover up all those details. So we created this basic bar chart in our previous video. Okay. And it's pretty cool. It looks pretty nice. And then we talked about the horizontal bar chart. These are the two bar chart variants that we covered in the previous tutorial. Okay, for any of you who directly jumped to this video, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check that out. Okay, so this is our first type of bar chart. Okay, the normal bar chart, then the horizontal bar chart. Okay, bar H stands for like bar horizontal. Okay, now this is our second type of bar chart. This is also extremely simple. All we need to do is, uh, hold on, I should explain this. This is actually a stacked bar chart, okay? And let me show you the output first before I begin explaining anything. So here we have our window, okay? And we can see our nice little matplotlib stacked bar chart in here, okay? So how was this phenomenon really possible? We didn't use a different function or anything, we just, changed a parameter or we added in a new parameter. This is the bottom parameter. The bottom parameter changes the starting position for a graph, for a bar, okay? Now each bar in the bar chart can have a different starting position, okay? So what we did was basically pass in the array for our first Y data, okay? This is our second bar chart, by the way. There are two bar charts being plotted. So the second bar chart, basically, for its starting position, took the array of values for our first Y data, for our first bar chart. So the top of our first bar chart is the starting point for the second bar chart. Okay, so that's how this works. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. All right, so I'll just comment that out and let's move on to the final example. Okay, this is the comparison or I think it's also called the grouped bar chart. Okay, so let me just run this first, then we'll talk about it. All right, so this is what I call the comparison bar chart. We're basically comparing two, you know, different sets of data. And if you understand the concept being used here, you can, you know, easily re replicate this to like uh, three or four or even five different sets of data. Although I think that might be a bit too much. So basically here we have the temperatures kind of for two countries in winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Okay, so we're just comparing them like this. It's a pretty good way of comparing them. We have them side by side. We can notice even a slight difference between them. Okay, so how was this really possible? Well, this is all pretty standard. We have the data here and over here, this is also pretty standard. We're just generating an array with the values 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Uh, you know, we have three labels, sorry, four labels. So it's going to generate four values like that. Okay. This is the width that we've specified for our bar chart. Okay. So how does this graph work? Where's the magic in it? Well, it's all within this first parameter. Okay. So if I just comment the second one out for a second and just remove that. So this is a very normal type of bar function now. So if I run our code, uh, you'll see that each bar is positioned in such a way that the tick, this small rectangular tick, it's in the center. Okay. Now, obviously, we can't, you know, we can't do this for two charts, right? We can't plot two bars side by side like this, right? So we need to make some adjustments. So what we'll do is move one of these bars a little to the left and move one of them a little to the right. And by how much are we going to move it? Well, we're going to move it by about half of its width because right now the tick is in the center. So we need to move it half of its width to the left and move one of them half of its width to the right. So that way we get our perfectly positioned graph. Okay. That's basically how the logic works. Okay. And we, we need to explicitly define the width 
otherwise matplotlib will use its own defined width okay so that's kind of important as well all right so yeah that's basically the entire concept just take a just take a look at the output one more time okay and you can pr see what i mean right that the tick is now in the center of both of them because we moved our blue one to the left and we moved the yellow one a bit to the right okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys learned something new today if you want to see more content like this and more matplotlib content we've just gotten started there's a lot more subscribe to the channel leave a like leave a comment let me know what you thought is there something in particular that you want to see if, if, if it's something interesting but tough we'll take a look at it definitely and maybe make a video on that all right so yeah see you guys in the next video bye then